One of those little things that you just have to master and understand in SSIS is the idea of validation in your data flow. This is going to, if you haven't seen this enough, it's going to become, uh, you know, your Achilles heel. It's really going to be painful to deal with. Even those of us that have worked with SSIS for quite a long time can get tripped up quite easily with validation. So I just want to try to give you a quick overview of what validation is. We are not able to, at this juncture in the course, go through a complete, hey, here's everything you need to know about validation, just because we, we haven't really covered things like expressions and variables and dynamic packages and a couple of other things yet. But I think I can give you enough right now to give you a basic idea and then as the course develops we'll see more and more examples and we'll go through that more and more more and more okay I need a uh, a package to work with here so let me just create a blank package now I'm gonna do some kind of silly things in this video just to kind of drive home what's actually happening the first silly thing I'm going to do is execute an empty package uh, you know, there's really nothing to do, there's not any tasks, but what I want you to know is that the output window that you see here, and by the way, if yours is not there like that, you can just go to view, you can go to output. So notice that there were really only two steps that occurred, two events. It started and it finished with an exit code success. Okay, easy enough. Let's, oops, sorry, need to get out of debugging mode first. Now, I'm just going to show you a couple of things. I can drag a few, well, let's don't do that one. I don't want to have to configure anything. Um, let's do, I'll drag a script task onto the surface because there's really no, uh, I don't have to actually do anything for that one. And when I take a look, when we execute this now with an empty script task or a templated script task, it's successful, but it's still just the, the same two little steps. Boring video, Scott. Why are you wasting my time? Um, well, now let's drag in a data flow task. Because this is what you're going to be doing so much of your time with, right? Yeah. Drag it on. Don't configure it. And execute it. And, you know, hey, we get a new event now. It's just an informational message that just says that the execute phase is beginning and then it finished successfully. Great. This is so much fun. Alright, I'm in the data flow task now. And now I want to add in a flat file source. And it really could be any of these, doesn't matter. Flat file source. Okay. Notice that it turns a little red icon there so I need to actually wire it up. So let's make a new source connection. I have some text file. It's not really important what's actually in the text file. That's not really the important piece. And I'm going to stop. I'm going to go, and I don't have to click that to execute it. It's just a habit. But I'm now going to execute it. So we've defined a source without a destination and without any transformations at all, right? Run it now. Things have changed. Okay. Once you start working with source and destination data, now the pipeline is invoked. Now the validation phase is beginning. And I, I hope that is readable. In case it isn't, there uh, is kind of what you're seeing. Now what I'm, what I'm interested in for you for this particular video focusing on is strictly this section about validation. Don't worry about the little performance warnings that you see, the output column, customer ID 10 on output box. That's basically telling me, hey, wait a minute, you've brought columns into this that you're not consuming later. Why don't you just drop those columns and I'll run faster. So you notice, though, the validation phase. Now, when we come back over here, let's um, go back into our data flow task here. And I will load this into a SQL Server destination. And I double click and I'm going to create a new connection to my test server here and I'm going to use the temp DB and I'm going to have SSIS create the table. I mean, the purpose of this is not to show you how to write SQL and, and do this. The purpose is understanding validation. 
Okay, so I'm going to name this table customers. It has a very, very basic schema. Uh, this is not real world stuff. You would never design a real table this way, but it's good enough for our demo. There are three columns. A couple of things to pay real, real close attention here to. There are three columns. They have a length each of 50. And these are all non-Unicode strings. Okay. You see, part of what validation is going to do is it's going to actually wire up to your sources and destinations, certain sources and certain destinations, and it's going to verify that the data types that are listed in SSIS actually match the data types that are in the destination or the source. Okay. I'm going to show you what I mean. That's one of the things that it's going to do. So I say OK, and we choose it right here. It's just the customers. We're mapping, just a straight mapping here. And I say OK, and you know we run this. We take a look at the output now. We have removed those warnings that said, hey, you know, remove these columns because you're not using them. We're now consuming all of the columns. And if we were to go to the management studio, Take a look in that table in the tempdb. We could say select all from customers. And sure enough, it loaded up the data. And you just trust me, that was the actual data in the uh, text file. Okay. So I now want to, let's just delete all of these rows in here. And oh, I meant to type delete. No, I really didn't, did I? <laughs> All right, so I've dropped the table. I did it on purpose. Okay, and you caught me. Um, back over in integration services now. Let's come back over here. We're taking a look here now at our execution. We go into the data flow task. Something is awry. We now don't have a destination table. So what's going to happen when we actually execute this? Is it going to validate and fail, or will it execute up until that point and then fail when it can't find the object? Well, here you go, my friend. We have a package validation error. You see, it didn't even execute the package. Once it started the package validation phase, it went to this data flow task, went to that particular destination, and verified that the object existed. The object doesn't exist, therefore we get this VS is broken. <laughs> and you can't continue when you get VS is broken. It won't let you actually work. So you got the task validation error. Okay, well there's a couple of things that we can do about this. We might, and this happens quite often, we actually might have a step up here, like let's drag an execute SQL task that says create the table. Okay, so the table doesn't exist, so let's create it. Let's go over here, let's use that same connection, and we could just do a direct input. Create table dbo.customer, and we had, oh man, I don't remember. <laughs> Thankfully, I've got a control file here. Customer ID, first name, and last name. Okay. All right, so customer ID, and do you remember your data types? Varkar 50, and they were all nullable. So then first name, Varkar50, last name, Varkar50. And I say OK, and, and that's it. I'm just executing SQL against the tempdb database, and I'm just going to have it execute that particular step. Okay. So let's now execute. Oh, man, still broken. But isn't SSIS smart enough to know that that step is going to create the table? That dumb old SSIS. All right, well, here's what you can do. We can go to the data flow tasks properties. So you can either go to right click and go to properties, or you can click it and hit the F4 function 4 on your keyboard. And it brings up the properties window. I guess you could have also gone up to here. And here's where. Here's where you want to go. You see this little delay validation right here. And you see the default setting of false. And that says when you fire it up, 
it's going to go validate your data types. It's going to validate that the destination is there if it's a SQL server, for example. Right? So we can change this to true. Delay the validation until runtime. And if you highlight your cursor up there, and you have a big enough screen, I'm going to show you down at the bottom. It shows you some kind of a description here that it's going to wait until runtime to actually do the validate. In other words, it's not going to validate at the outset of the package. So when the package is fired up during the package validation phase, it's not going to validate this particular task. It's going to wait until it's this task's turn to execute. Then it will validate. Okay. So let's come back over here. Now remember, we don't have a table customers in tempdb. We've run drop multiple times. We only needed to do it once. But it's not there. I mean, even if, just to make sure everybody understands here, okay? I know that the cache, the IntelliSense, looks like it's there. But as soon as we refresh that local cache of IntelliSense, it's not there anymore. Because the table is not there. Right? Invalid object. Sweet. Here we go. Scroll down. I move this up, sorry. Uh-oh, we've got a one or more components failed validation now. <sighs> so we've got VS is broken, so it could not actually work. So the metadata for customers cannot be retrieved. What did I do wrong? Did I make it customer and not customers? <laughs> I did. Ah, dummy. <laughs> um, I meant to make it customers, but I accidentally made it customer because <laughs> that actually should have worked. <laughs> um, so let's drop the table customer. Sorry. <laughs> You'll do that too, I promise you. Uh, and I now want the execute SQL command to create the table customers. Plural, because I hope after this video I have more than one. Um, we'll run this again and execute it. And now it's delayed the validation. Okay, so the only thing that we changed to make it actually work was telling it to delay the validation. Right here. So I just simply highlighted that. I go to viewing the properties. And I change delay validation to true. Now here's a tricky part right here. I'm going to change it back to false. I'm going to disable this task. Will it run now? Oh, don't let me trick you. I'm, I'm really trying to trick you. Yes, it will run because the object is there now. Remember the reason it was failing is that the object wasn't there? Now the object's there, so I can hit F5, have it execute, and it loads up just fine. Okay, I, and you'll see that when we look at it, it actually loaded it up twice. Now you can see Scott Wiggum being listed. The whole group is loaded twice. If we drop it, though... Okay, now come back and run it. Now it will fail because of the validation. It tried to reach to the customers. Okay, one final little bitty piece here. Let me re-enable. And I'm going to, instead of going to the data flow task and delaying the validation, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the data flow task, and I'm going to go to the destination. Because it's the destination that is failing the validation. I might not mind if, if this fails validation. I might want it to stop. I might strictly want this one little piece of my data flow task to fail validation, and that's okay. So here's the same thing. Go to properties. The difference now is it's a little bit different. It's called validate external metadata. And you can see the default setting here is true. Okay, well, that right there is what's causing it to fail. If we run this without the table there, it goes and it checks for the, the external metadata. Change it to false. Okay. Change that to false. I can leave this outer task right here to delay the validation to false. So do validate. So what this is doing is it's saying for the data flow task itself, for everything in the data flow task, go ahead and perform your main validation checks. Except you, Mr. Destination, because we have changed your default from true to false for validate external metadata.
and then you just simply run it and it will go just fine. Now, I'm, I know some of this may be not 100% clear. Like I said, we don't have enough information at this point in the course to cover every aspect of this. But I think if you'll stick with me throughout this chapter, and particularly chapter 5, you're going to get it. You're going to be comfortable with it.